live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE, covering NAB 2017. Brought to you by HGST. Welcome back to NAB, good afternoon. I'm Lisa Martin, you're watching theCUBE live at day three of NAB. Happy to introduce you to our next guest, Shalendra Matur, the VP of Architecture at Avid. Shalendra, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. You were telling me off camera that this is your eighth or ninth NAB. I'd love to, before we kind of dig into uh, Avid and what you're doing, just get your perspective on the incredible transformation you've probably seen in those eight years. What are some of the things that stand out to you that maybe seemed like a fad seven or eight years ago that you've seen that are now absolutely well established and critical to the media and entertainment industry? Well, you know what? Um, one thing I'll comment on right away, uh, it's something I've been commenting to other folks who haven't been here that long. When we used to come to NAB some time ago, outside in the parking lot would be all these trucks. There'd be all these helicopters, right? Th that's how news broadcast, this was done. The parking lot is empty. That's not where things are. There are drones in here, in cages, right? right? I mean, that's the new way, uh, the digital age, as well as the new technologies have evolved that, uh, uh, the way we collect news and uh, the way we are actually capturing news is actually changing quite a bit. So and, that and equipment so is changing quite yes, a bit. Yes, yes. So you spoke at the virtual NAB conference last month on cloud transition patterns for media enterprises. Tech trends, what are some of the things that you're seeing? What did you share in that conference? So the biggest tech trend I think uh, we're seeing is the move to cloud computing. Uh, uh, cloud has been around for a while. We've been all been used to it. Um, whether we're using Dropbox or any other uh, me mechanism of exchanging content. Um, uh, what's happening is that it's now being adopted by the media industry a lot more. They, uh, and again, uh, what we knew as server-based computing, you had machine rooms where servers were being created, were being hosted, um, there was dedicated connectivity between them. A lot of that is now moving to network, and it's uh, the compute uh, storage, all of that is slowly moving over to the cloud. Um, and the cloud providers are actually making it very possible to do so. So a lot of what I was talking about uh, at the VNAB conference was um, how some of these broadcasters who are faced with these new challenges and uh, to get more efficient, to have, to have geographically distributed uh, productions, what patterns they can actually adopt to ease their transition to the cloud. Um, so, for, just as an example, um, in, in the cloud, there's a efficiency of doing something called servers, serverless computing, microservices. Um, but then there's a lot of IP, a lot of uh, um, server-based compute that has been built up. So, there is a transition pattern still of going from machine room to data centers. That's a central localization. Um, and just using virtualization technologies, going from data centers now to the public cloud. And in fact, even doing it in such a way that you're connected in all three environments, right. so that if you wanted to transition over, you can actually connect all these three uh, environments. So that was the main uh, purpose of the talk, and I was talking about some of the uh, implementations that we have done as well with an Avid that actually eases the transition so that you can uh, host uh, your, your server processes, your how actually editing clients are working across. Uh, we've actually done a lot of implementations. So I was explaining uh, how that transition uh, can be possible for not just broadcasters, but filmmakers and also audio artists. Yeah, I wanted to talk about audio. We've been talking a lot about um, film, the major studios at the conference this week, news, you know, broadcast news, streaming services. Mm -hmm. But you guys do a lot with audio and music production. What we are do. some of the biggest pain points that you see in music production that can really be alleviated by moving to cloud computing? Uh, so, uh, artists are artists everywhere. You will find artists, you, want, you don't want to be restricted by geography uh, uh, in finding the person you want to collaborate with. Right. What does cloud provide? That one centralized location where you can exchange information, um, exchange your creativity. So this is one of the areas where we focused on, um, so the, the, for, we have Pro Tools as our uh, primary uh, audio DAW. And uh, what we enabled was having two uh, uh, artists collaborate with each other, even by sharing tracks. So you could have somebody uh, uh, doing a guitar riff somewhere, a drummer somewhere, a singer somewhere, and 
you're collaborating on these tracks and we're using the cloud to exchange a lot of this information back and forth. Uh, you can me uh, message each other, or hey, I need this uh, piece of uh, work done. They record it, you integrate it back. So that was a perfect example of cloud collaboration and, and this is aimed at uh, the aspiring musicians uh, who can collaborate as well as professionals. So look, thinking maybe um, of the professionals and, and, and music production company, what does their transition, as the VP of architecture, I imagine you speak with a lot of customers who are probably quite influential in mm -hmm. what Abbott's doing from a design and R&D perspective. What does a music production company's transition to production in the cloud look like? Mm -hmm. What are the, I don't want to say hurdles, but what are, what are maybe the steps in that journey to get to cloud? Is it, is it a destination hybrid? Is it a, is it a journey through hybrid to public? I, so th that's what we, uh, so some of the current um, restrictions, I'll, I'll call it, uh, will, uh, will slowly disappear, but uh, the fact is when you're interacting as an artist with a, um, a surface controller, a mixer, that's tactile information, that's right there. However, what doesn't need to happen is that your, the computations that happen behind it doesn't have to be right here. With network connectivity, you can start moving that away from the control that you have over the, um, what you're creating, your, your, your mixers. So this is where some of the compute is moving away. Uh, now, you have to take care, especially in audio, latency is very important, like low latency. So uh, low latency networks have to, uh, have to be there. On the video side, uh, in fact, we're showing um, video editing um, being done directly on the cloud with uh, VDI technology, uh, which is virtual display uh, uh, technology, um, improving so rapidly now, uh, we are actually able to do editing directly from while, instead of having a workstation uh, on premises, you actually have it running on the cloud. So those are examples um, which, were, which are hurdles, but they're not really hurdles, that's just creative choices. You need to have your color correction surface control here, but slowly those are the ones that are moving to the centralized data center all, all the way to the cloud. And now even some of the display aspects where you needed everything to be local, that's also moving. So things like GPU-based compute that's appearing uh, um, on all, a lot of the cloud providers, that's allowing your cloud backend to drive your displays now remotely. Last question for you before we wrap up here. I'd love to understand how Abbott is involved from a technology perspective to help uh, broadcast news, for example, mm -hmm. assemble a story and get it out in real time 24 by seven. In, in contrast to a few years ago here at NAB when the parking lot was full of, of trucks with yeah. satellite towers, how are you helping to assemble this story with technology? Well, so news is changing, right? It's, uh, news is changing, uh, it's coming in rapidly. A lot of the news sources are in fact sometimes social feeds. I'll, exactly. I'll confess, uh, some of my news in the morning is not by the newspaper, I'm checking my Facebook. Yeah, or <laughs> and Twitter. that's where I'm getting, or Twitter, and that's where I'm getting my news. Absolutely, as, it's mixed in with my own personal news as well as it's news is news. Right. So, uh, 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 collecting that information that's become a very important source of information. Of course, storytelling, you, uh, as a journalist, doesn't get replaced. You still need the skills of making sure that you can craft it all together. So that's where uh, assembling it, telling that story through an ed ed editorial process but treating just the social media feed as an input to the whole process of collecting this information, this is one change that's happening. But of course, it's not just social media as a source, but it's also a destination. So that's another big change. So you're not just publishing out your story to a, a, a news outlet, you can tweet it out. So these are all uh, changes that are happening. And these are all, uh, you, you asked about how are some of the customers influencing it. Um, we, have, we just had the Avid Connect event, and one of the uh, things that we find really good about the Avid Connect event, these are our customers telling us how they're changing. This is how we're collecting input and reacting uh, to it and, and changing uh, what we need to do to serve them. Excellent, well, I'm curious what you'll see in the next eight years of NAB. Shalindra, thank you so much for joining us on thank the you. Cube and sharing your insights. Well, thank you very much, Lisa. And we want to thank you for watching theCUBE. Again, we're live at NAB 2017 on day three. I'm Lisa Martin, stick around, we'll be right back.